Hello, this is Eric Michael Lloyd. I have a master's in psychology, neuropsychology concentration. I'm also a retired, uh, registered behavioral analyst or registered behavioral technician, RBT, and have yet to take a competency assessment to continue in the field. Um, as of now, the field is at a standstill because of the coronavirus anyway would also make it very difficult to do anything um, virtual or in, in video form because of gestural and physical problems and proximity to the client that is required for the job. Anyway, I'm also a licensed health and life insurance agent in Louis as well in the state of Florida. I wanted to read an article regarding dissociable effects of tryptophan supplementation on negative feedback sensitivity and reversal learning. This article was written by Martin Thurkel, Laura Marie Barker, and Luca Aquili. This is from, uh, let's see, Frontier of Behavioral Neuroscience. This was published in 2019, volume 13, Issue or issue 13, volume 127. Abstract serotonin has been shown to modulate probabilistic reversal learning, PRL, and negative feedback sensitivity in both animal and human studies. Whilst these two measures are tightly coupled, some studies have suggested that these may be mediated by independent mechanisms. The former representing preservation and cognitive flexibility, the latter measuring the ability to maintain a response set, when stay at the expense of lose shift behavior when occasionally, occasional misleading feedback has been presented. Here, we tested this hypothesis in 44 healthy participants who were administered tryptophan 22 placebo, 22 tryptophan, a precursor to serotonin. We found a dissociable effect of tryptophan supplementation on PRL uh, over NFS, which is negative feedback sensitivity, with the former being probabilistic reversal learning. Specifically, tryptophan administration increased NSF, that's negative feedback sensitivity, compared to placebo group, but had no effect on PRL. We discussed these findings in relation to dosages and with a particular focus on the acute tryptophan depletion ATD procedures. Keywords are tryptophan, serotonin, reversal learning, negative feedback sensitivity, and learning. Introduction. Serotonin 5-HT has long been implicated in probabilistic reversal learning, PRL and in processing negative feedback. Both are measured by the PRL task originally developed in humans, Cools et al., 2002, but then also adapted in animal studies, Berry et al., 2010, Anichin et al., 2012. In this task, the subject is instructed to choose one of two visual stimuli in order to maximize correct feedback rewards. Once a certain number of correct responses are made, stimulus reward contingencies are reversed. Additionally, for a minority of trials, usually 20%, misleading feedback is provided to a normally rewarded response. Negative feedback sensitivity, NSF, is defined at the frequency for which responses shift to the usual non-rewarded choice on such trials. Depressed patients who are known to have impaired serotonergic function display normal PRL but higher NSF NFS compared to healthy subjects. Murphy et al. 2003, Taylor Tavares et al. 2008, suggesting that at least behaviorally, these two processes can be decoupled. This effect also appears to be dose and acute chronic administration dependent. Low, acute is one milligram per kilogram, 
doses, doses of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, SSRI, citalopram in rats, impaired PRL, and increased NFS, whereas high, acute, 10 milligrams per kilogram doses produced the opposite effect. In the same study, chronic high doses, 5 milligrams per kilogram daily, 7 days, in contrast, improved PRL, but did not affect NFS, Bari et al., 2010, Robbins, 2017. Similar findings for low acute doses, doses of citalopram, 30 milligram, have also been reported in humans. Chamberlain et al., 2006. Using a different SSRI in rats, escitalopram, all doses, 0 0.03, 0 0.3, or 1.0 milligram per kilogram, improved PRL, but left NFS unaffected, Brown et al., 2012. These findings may partially be explained by the slightly different characteristics of citalopram and escitalopram. Whilst both have similar pharmacokinetics, escitalopram has higher potency and selectivity than citalopram. Karen Deng et al., 2011. There is also some evidence to suggest that Polymorphisms in the gene encoding the serotonin transporter, SERT, can affect NFS and PRL differentially. In this study, Den Auden et al., 2013, individuals who were L homozygotes, meaning decreased levels of extracellular serotonin, had higher NFS than S carriers, whilst there was no PRL performance difference between these two groups. It is important, nonetheless, to stress that the association between the SERT promoter polymorphism and depression has not been confirmed by a recent meta-analysis. Coverhouse et al., 2018, and may suggest a more complex interaction. Rigula et al., 2018. Studies using the acute tryptoplan depletion, ATD, procedure have produced mixed results. Some have reported no effect on PRL, but NFS was not investigated. Evers et al. 2005, Talbot et al. 2006, Finger et al. 2007, Van der Plasse and Venstra 2008. Whereas in others, ATD impaired PRL, Murphy et al. 2002. Overall, the studies reviewed on depressed patients SSRI administration and ATD suggest a potential inverted U-shaped relationship between serotonin concentration and NFS over PRL, whereby too low or high five HT levels impair performance. Hus Hulskin et al. 2013. Interestingly, a similar relationship has long been reported for the other monoamine neurotransmitter dopamine, Kuhl's D. Esposito, 2011. Here, using a double-blind placebo-controlled mixed design method, we hypothesize that tryptophan supplementation may selectively affect NSF but leave PRL performance intact. Although numerous studies have looked at tryptophan's modulation of memory response to unfairness, emotional processing, attention, and executive function. Saab Zak et al., 2003, Buji et al., Buij et al., 2006, Murphy et al., 2006, Daltry et al., 2007, Morgan et al., 2007, Silber and Schmidt, 2010, Serret et al., 2015, Mo. Hajari et al. 2015. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first study looking at its effects on PRL and NFS. Materials and Methods Participants Participants consisted of 44 university students who were either administered tryptophan, N is equal to 22, M is equal to 21.4, standard deviation is 3.0, 13 females and 9 males, or placebo. N is equal to 22, M is equal to 20.8.
standard deviation is 2.6, 15 females and 7 males. The study was approved by the Ethics Committee of Sheffield Hallam University and complied with the Declaration of Polinsky. Written informed consent was obtained for all participants before testing could take place. Exclusion criteria included those suffering from cardiac, hepatic, renal, and neurological disorders, and individuals with a history of alcohol or drug addiction or psychiatric illness, including individuals who had a history of taking antidepressants. Individuals having a history of taking tryptophan supplements were also excluded. Drug administration. Participants received either 0.8 grams of tryptophan supplied by Bulk Powders LTD, Colchester, UK, or 0.8 grams of microcrystalline cellulose. Sigma Outrich Co. LLC, St. Louis, Missouri, USA, dissolved in 200 milligram, milliliters of orange juice as per previously published protocols. Steenberg et al. 2014. Peak plasma concentrations of tryptophan using this dosage have been shown to occur 60 minutes following oral administration. Marcus et al. 2008. Probabilistic reversal learning task. To assess NFS and reversal learning, <clears throat> to assess to assess PRL and and NFS the PRL paradigm developed by Cools et al 2002 and which runs in PEBL software, Mueller and Piper, 2014. Here, using trial and error feedback, participants need to discover which of two patterns is correct. See figure one. To complete the PRL, participants had to finish one block of trials consisting of 10 reversals. Each block had approximately 150 trials. Each reversal occurred after a variable 10 to 15 correct responses, including probabilistic errors. Here, defined as misleading feedback provided to the usually correct and rewarded response. The number of probabilistic errors per reversal varied between 0 and 4. The task was self-paced, meaning that there was no timeout period to produce a response in each trial. However, Participants were asked to respond as quickly and as accurately as possible. Participants were given a full block of practice trials before testing began. We measured the following dependent measures. Total errors, reversal errors, and NFS. Total errors were made up of incorrect responses occurring before and after each reversal. Reversal errors were counted as the number of incorrect responses after each reversal and before the first correct response following a reversal.